Okay, we're back for part three, guys, on this house. If you remember it from the previous videos that you've seen. And I promised you guys an immaculate lawn here. And, uh, well, we had about like three straight weeks of 100 degree weather and I just didn't keep up with it. So, kind of failed on that aspect. Uh, but I hope we made up for it for you guys. On the inside of the home, it turned out awesome. Probably one of the nicest remodels I've done on a starter home house like this. So... Come on in, we'll check it out. I'll give you a run through. Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember this house from before, but uh, completely changed what it uh, what it looked like, especially the feel of it from the living, kitchen, dining area, which is where people spend a lot of their time and where money's made. So uh, right here, we went vinyl flooring up the steps. We always do nice matching stair noses on those steps. And the wall was right down the middle of this. We, we put in a, a support beam across here with a post and just opened it up. So one thing that's really unique about this property that we I've never done before uh, selling it is we got it staged because there was a house just right around the corner that we got flipped. I went over and talked to the lady. She showed me the house. It was staged. We worked out a deal just to move basically her staging equipment over here at the same time. So. Perfect timing, it worked out. I think I'm gonna do a lot more staging. Let me get, let me uh, know in the comments down below what you guys think, but I think it's gonna make a big difference on the way that the house shows and basically just the feel as you walk through, check it out. So we uh, are on the market actually currently. We haven't sold the house yet. I'm gonna go over that with you guys more at the end of the video on what the numbers look like. I'm super transparent on what those do look like and not just gross numbers, but what everything boils down to at the very end. So check it out. Typically I wouldn't be standing right here. Typically I'd, there's a wall right here and it separates, but we got everything combined. We put shiplap underneath the countertop right here uh, on the back side of these cabinets. So it's got that fill. We put granite countertops in. I stay super white and black, like with everything, just super neutral, you guys know that, if you um, have been following along. But then our stager came in and just did some awesome accents with like natural wood grain and made it, got it more of a homey feel. Everyone loves the, the accent wall. That's like the first thing that everyone has said that has walked through it. They really like this gray accent wall across here. And then another, uh, another, Feature that we've got a lot of comments on are these um, railings, metal railings, powder coated, really fresh look. We went with the horizontal uh, balusters rather than vertical for a more modern look. My favorite's the five panel door. So we throw on a five panel door on these and then go ahead and check out the bathroom. We went with the same tile package on both bathrooms. And then this is a much larger vanity than we typically use. We either go with like 36 or 48 inch vanities that you can just get off the shelf at a store. But this one we had to make and get a countertop built for. And so really stands out. This is actually quartz countertop. Master bedroom, new vinyl windows. And then, I mean, it's not much, it's just a bedroom. That's why it's nice to have the staging. Same five panel doors, sliding bypass. I don't know, I felt like just doing something different. So we went with some more like square accent, like uh, finishes on, on things. So square handles on some of the doors and then uh, square light fixtures in the kitchen, kitchen and dining room area. So you can see those across here. We got downstairs left. Let's go check it out. So another mat, uh, metal hand railing. Um, just coming off the, this is what we call a split level here in Utah. I don't know if you guys in other parts of the country have the same thing, but it's like a super common house style where you come in and you got like an upstairs and a downstairs right off the front door. So. A little bit of a smaller bathroom, but kind of the same exact thing as we did upstairs as far as tile and shower. Just a fresh feel, smaller living room with um, two more bedrooms down here. And then I, I don't know, it might be appealing to some people, but there is a basement walkout entrance. So we'll see what type of buyer we get and what, you know, sometimes people will rent out like their basement uh, separate from the upstairs. And so there is a separate entrance with a laundry room down here as well. So 
Uh, maybe you guys want to see my poor job on the lawn in the backyard. Like I said, it was super hot. We're not used to that weather here in Utah. It was literally a hundred days, like every day. And so I was gonna try to overseed this lawn here, and, but I needed it to get down more like 80, 85 degrees to do that. I, so I never got around to it. We had a deck already here, but it was very unstable. So we basically just rebuilt the same layout of the deck, but we used Trex decking on the top. And so that's all done. Okay, so as you guys know, like my style of video is I want to be able to help people do what I'm doing here. And so I always I always go over numbers or math or something. This is gonna be more hypothetical because this house right here is actually not even sold or under contract. We can't use it as an example, but let's just say it's it's pretty close to, to what we're we're doing. So the way I do it, and everyone does it, everyone has like rules of thumb quick ways of, of strategizing it, but I just, I do it very simple. I work the numbers backwards from wherever it's gonna, wherever I'm gonna end, right? So we have what's called ARV, which stands for after repair value. So you need to get with a realtor or, you know, search online and figure out what a house that you're going for or that you're offering on is gonna sell for when you get done with the whole project. So what it's gonna sell for on the open market, let's say $400,000. Then you're gonna look for your closing costs and agent fees. I take 5% off of my deals at the end for my agent fees and closing costs. So I automatically just times that by 0.95 and I get down to $380,000. The next number you're looking for is your interest on your loan. A lot of people get hard money loans to flip houses and that's gonna be, at least where I'm at in the country, it's about 1% a month, plus one to 2% to originate the loan in the first place. And so we held this house for, um, we're gonna hold it for three months, two months to remodel and one month to, to sell. Let's just say we're, what we borrowed $300,000, that's 3,000 a month times three months is 9,000, plus another percent to originate the loan in the first place, so that's 12,000 right there. So we're taking, um, 12,000 off the 380,000 gets us down to $368,000. Then we take off the big chunks. So flipping this house, it was about, I'm gonna roughly tell you guys, I spent about 50 to $60,000 to remodel this house like I did. And if you wanna see where I started, go back and check the other video where uh, in part one, we walked through it before we ever even started. I mean, it was basically a top to, top to bottom remodel on about 1800 square feet of living space here. Let's stay conservative. Let's take off that full $60,000 for repairs. So now I'm down to $318,000 and I haven't made any money yet on this property. Not this property. Obviously we're talking hypothetical, right? I hit that. I need, you need to define what a reasonable profit is for you to deal. Some people are really happy with 15, $20,000 on a flip. As you get more experience, you're going to realize that that's not enough money to be made with the risks that you're taking and the time you're spending. I uh, recently have been, you know, trying to make the same amount of money I spend on the repairs as I as I do in the profit. So if it's fifty to sixty thousand, that's about what I'm shooting for. So I'm going to take that off of the three hundred and eighteen, and I'm going to be shooting to get that house under contract for somewhere in that range. Um, you know, there's plenty of of deals out there. Go out there and start making offers, work your numbers backwards, get used to this formula, start figuring out what your, your repairs cost you. Um, talk with other flippers, talk with contractors, get with um, realtors to figure out what houses are gonna sell for. And the more you figure out your numbers, the quicker you can generate these offers and you'll find a house that you can flip just like this one.